Hey guys, what is up? This is Phil Bone, and we are taking a look at a build that is very much the classic Fire Mage and action RPGs. This build is going to use Fireball and Condense Fire. With Fireball, you will be shooting fireballs that will explode upon hit. It does a really fantastic job of clearing out mobs. We will be activating to Condense Fire. When activated, Condense Fire will create fire orbs near its target, and after a set amount of time, will explode doing incredible damage. The point of these two skills is that they complement each other. Fireball is going to do a good job clearing. Condensed Fire is going to help you burn down single targets. So if the classic Fire Mage archetype appeals to you, this is as close to that build as you're going to get. So let's jump into the details. We're going to have a look at our skills here. Fireball is going to be our main skill. As we cast Fireball, it will explode upon hit and damage all the enemies near the explosion. Other than that, this skill is very straightforward. Has a mediocre projectile speed, not the fastest, but not the slowest either. This is going to be faster than Frostball. And then it dishes out fairly good fire damage and then has a chance to burn. We're also going to be doing increased damage against enemies that are burning. But other than that, not too much more to the skill. As for Awakenings, we will be Awakening to Source to get the element damage amplification. This is going to give us the most amount of additional damage. Condensed Fire creates a sphere of condensed fire, and after a period of time, is going to explode doing pretty big damage. The way that this works, you're going to get these additional orbs. So by default, you only get one projectile, and for every additional five energy, you'll get these additional orbs. So it starts with one, and as you go up to five energy, you'll have two. After you reach maximum fire energy, you'll get this suppress heat debuff. And after one second has elapsed, your fire energies will be removed and your projectile count will go away. With that being said, the awakening that we're going to go with is Origin, and it's going to make it to where you do not increase projectiles with fire energy. Instead, you will always have this plus two projectile count, but you're going to have a big damage dampening, up to 40% damage dampening. This isn't a big problem because what happens when you use condensed fire, it gets spawned right on the enemy that you're attacking and the damage is overlapping. So if you are getting three projectiles or three orbs, you will do damage with all three of them. So as you're shooting it, all of these orbs are popping up and doing damage to the enemy. They will spawn directly on the enemy. So we will be getting far more damage from those three projectiles than we would otherwise. Up next, we're going to be using Release Element for our attack enhance to get this very large element damage amplification and cast speed boost. If you are attack speed cap, you should use Marksman instead. The reason that we're going to use Marksman instead if you're not cast speed cap is because you get this plus one pierce count and hit rate. If you are not cast speed capped, I think Release Element's better, but this one does add the pierce count and this is important. Uh, we'll explain why a little bit later but keep that in mind. Next up for our defense enhance, we will be using Siphon Life to get a big life leech boost for the duration of this. However, even though this is an intelligence based build, you can still use Tenacious Regeneration if you prefer the quick HP boost and HP regen. It's also good. I think Siphon Life is better because you do get way more health back. So I do prefer Siphon Life for this build. And for movement abilities, I'm using Roll as my primary. And then I also use penetrating slash in my additional slot here just because I like to be able to get around much quicker and then for seal I'm using seal of critical chance if you're crit cap you're going to want to use seal of condensed elements as it will give you more damage but if you aren't seal of critical chance is the route to go for links we are going to use quick cast to increase our cast speed this is like probably the best rune that you can boost up early on and the reason you want to boost this one up early is because as you cast quicker not only do you cast fireball but you also cast condensed fire. A boost to this is essentially a double damage increase and you're going to want to get this boosted up early. Next up we're using concentrated area damage. One of the biggest damage amplification increases you can get. Also element damage amplification. Another very straightforward is a nice increase in damage. And then next up for farming you're going to want to use something like parallel multi-shot or multi-shot. I don't really notice too much of a difference between the two. This is kind of like what you're going to get with parallel multi-shot and this is what you're going to get with multi-shot. So both of them give really good coverage while you're mapping. I don't notice too much of a difference. The next rune I think you're going to want is going to be piercing. Piercing piercing is going to add additional damage amplification for every single pierce that you have. And once you awaken this, you get an extra plus one pierce with big projectile damage on top of that. So you'll eventually get four pierce count and that's going to be 22% amplification plus another five here. And then you're also getting all this additional 
projectile damage on top of that. So this one's really, really nice. Your pierce count is going to determine how many mobs your fireball can go through before it basically goes away. So plus four, it's gonna let us go through more mobs and you can see we're piercing through enemies here. So with a plus three pierce count, you will be able to hit three enemies before your fireball finishes off. So I think personally, if you're going to use parallel multi-shot, piercing works really, really well with it. It's gonna help you with farming and bossing. However, I do think that chain is slightly better for mapping. So your chain is going to let your fireball hit multiple enemies and it will bounce from one enemy to the other. After you awaken this, you can have up to four chain counts. I'm gonna take off this parallel multi-shot so you can kind of see how it works. And you can see, it just, it hits an enemy and starts bouncing from one to the next. I think it's slightly better for mapping because when you hit enemies, the chain gives it a chance to kind of break off and hit enemies off to the sides that you wouldn't have hit already. Personally, my favorite way to map is with multi-shot and chain in this build, but I think if you're going to go all in on two runes, piercing and parallel multi-shot is going to be what I would go in on. Piercing is really good kind of right out the gate, so you don't have to invest a whole lot into it for it to be good. Chain takes a lot of investment to be good. I recommend piercing for more all-around gameplay. The next rune I wanna talk about in this is Ignition Explosion. Ignition Explosion is probably the biggest damage increase you're gonna be able to get with a rune. You're gonna to wanna to use it but only if you awaken it, because the way that ignition explosion works is that you are going to get this damage amplification against burning enemies, but you can't apply the burn. Also, you're gonna have this target's burn is removed upon dealing damage. So we don't wanna remove the burn because that's additional damage. So what we do is we're going to awaken to origin. We take a hit in damage dampening. It's still going to do incredible amounts of damage. The upside here is that you do not remove the burn and you can inflict it now. So let's say you awaken and you're dampened 6%, you're still gonna have 30% amplification, some fire damage, additional damage against burning, crit damage, and crit rate. This rune is just too good to sleep on. You gotta get this one. If you're planning on investing in the build, get this one, awaken to origin. And if it's me, I'm probably at that point going to share ignition explosion between fireball and condensed fire if you've turned your spell activation on spell hit rune. Another really strong rune here is fire penetration. So if you can't get one of them, grab this one, this one's good. We will then be activating to condense fire, use the concentrated area damage rune here, element damage amplification again, strike. Strike is good, it adds a lot of amplification and strike damage, but it will lower cast speed. However, since this is our activated skill, this doesn't matter, so use strike. Mana storm is also incredible damage. However, it does increase the cost of your condensed fire, but no big deal there. And then for the last rune, if your mapping area effect is decent to make your condensed fire larger. However, if you're going for maximum damage, again, we talk about ignition explosion. If that's awakened, I would use that. Also fire penetration is fantastic. Now for the Zodiac stats, what you're going to want is enough intelligence to use your fireball and condensed fire, and that is it. No more intelligence is needed. Early on, I would say, don't worry about putting anything in dexterity. However, you will eventually want to start building this up to get your dexterity to 200 because you're eventually going to want to get this 40% damage node where your strength, dex, and intelligence is 200 or more. So you're going to want 200 on each of these. Then you're also going to grab these two nodes here, area damage and projectile damage if strength and intelligence is 200. And then again, your dexterity and intelligence. So this is another reason we want 200 on dexterity. So we can grab all these nodes here and then put everything else in strength just to get a nice boost on armor and HP as I think these stats are probably the most useful. You don't have to follow this to a T, but here are my Zodiac traits. You want to focus on spell and cast speed. For my second trait, I grab the armor path. Until you get armor cap, that's really good. In Jam, I grab these first three points, and then I'm grabbing five points here in Yunos just so that I have good mana effectiveness. You can drop these if your mana is not an issue. Three, four, you go down this path here. I'm grabbing, again, more armor. Grab the resistance you need the most. I'm grabbing these three points here. I want this damage taken decrease. I like that a lot. And then in here, I'm grabbing these three points here to get this cast speed. Tree five is really nice to get your cast speed and your crit rate and damage up. Again, in tree seven, we're looking at trying to get all three of these nodes here. So make sure your Zodiac stats are 200 or more each, if you can. If not, don't put anything in dexterity. Don't worry too much about it. In scent, I'm grabbing this area of effect. This isn't like too, too necessary. So you can drop these four points if you want, but I'm getting them just to have a slightly bigger area of effect on my fireball and condensed fire. But then I also grab five points here to get more mana potion effectiveness. I'm using a staff, so I'm grabbing these points in Plague. I also grab five points in the Farmer for HP increase. 
And then I go into Hunter to get time of the hunt for damage amplification. Then for the specialization, we're going up, grabbing this cast speed amplification. We get acceleration, which gives us a movement speed, cast speed increase. Overpower is going to give us flat damage increase and element penetration. And then we grab this strike damage amplification down here. Next up in vacuum, we are going to grab knowledge to get a cast speed and spell damage boost. And then we grab this 15 damage amp node. This does make us take more damage, but the extra damage is well worth it. We'll also be grabbing sharpness to get a crit rate, crit damage increase. When I get my last point here, I'm going to drop it into spell crit rate, spell crit damage. If you're crit capped, you can drop these two points and go up here and grab this area damage amplification since both fireball and condensed fire have the area tag. And then the third specialization, what I like to do is go up and grab this element damage amplification. And also this 1% element damage amp for every 50 intelligence is good. Then we get a nice boost to our cast speed, a resource cost dampening to kind of compensate for the additional times for casting. And then we also get this barrier absorb on hit and absorb limit, which is going to help us regenerate our barrier while we're doing damage. This one's really good. I think it's worth probably getting some barrier into your build. At least I would probably go for armor barrier hybrid in this build, probably lean a little bit towards armor until you get your armor high enough, maybe 60% plus, and then put more points into barrier after that, just to make that worthwhile. The other thing I would say here is if you want additional projectiles, so if you want the plus two projectile count, I would probably drop these four points unless you have a lot of barrier or if your cast speed is really high already. So keep these points if your cast speed is high already, but if you need the cast speed amplification, I'd stick in here and then I'd grab these additional points to get these plus two projectile count. So by default, fireball only shoots one, but with multi-shot, we're able to get four more to make fives and that plus two will give us seven. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of nutty looking. It's not a big damage decrease when you grab them. It does make farming lower level dungeons slightly faster. So this is kind of what you're going to get. This is multi-shot now. Personally, I like multi-shot with chain it when I'm going with seven. So you've got some flexibility there. And that's what I do when I'm mapping a lot. I'll get that plus two. The other thing is having that plus two will allow you to take off your multi-shot or your parallel multi-shot and go all in on additional damage. So let's throw that on. I'll say even this three right here is pretty decent for mapping. And it's definitely more damage against bosses since you don't have to run multi-shot. One of the downsides of multi-shot is that even at max level, you're only getting a little bit of projectile amplification and projectile damage. The awakenings are kind of garbage for damage. Like there's no damage awakening. If you're comfortable running with three fireballs, it still does really well and you're gonna get a decent damage increase. So. That is my recommendation. Those are your options. Do with it what you will. As far as like the gear stats, charm stats, and then your relic information, all of that is going to be detailed in the description of the video. So go check that out. We talked a little bit about armor barrier. I think armor barrier hybrid is probably the route you wanna go in this build, but do make sure your armor is high enough that you're not getting like absolutely obliterated by physical damage. So make sure you have a decent amount of armor I'd shoot for 60 plus percent on armor and then throw some barrier in on that. There are some builds that go full on barrier, but those take a significant amount of investment to work well. So I'd avoid it. But that is the Fire Mage build. It's incredibly fun. One of the tastiest and most visually appealing builds I've played. And if you're into fire, you're going to like it a lot. But if I've missed anything or if you've got any questions, drop me something in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. How else can we improve the build? Let me know that as well. But if the video has been helpful, do me a solid. Give me a like and a subscribe. It helps me out a lot, but I've got to get back to the grind. So I'll catch you guys later.